Today's video covers various types of testing that can be done to identify an unknown bacteria. So before we start with this, I'd like to ask you to please read pages 49 to 54, again 49 to 54 in your lab manual. Look at the picture atlas slides from section 3 and also view the other videos that have been uploaded. So the first type of testing I'd like to discuss is a PEA plate or phenyl ethyl alcohol auger plate. And this type of plate will inhibit the DNA synthesis of gram-negative bacteria. And if you take a look at the picture here, guys, you will clearly see on the left-hand side, these are plates of Staph aureus. They grow quite well on the PEA. However, gram-negative will be inhibited or sometimes you don't see any growth at all. Occasionally, just so you know, you may have growth uh, of gram-negative on these plates as well. Some are pretty aggressive. But what you need to be aware of is that uh, there will be inhibition of DNA synthesis of gram-negative bacteria. The next type of plate that I'd like to discuss is called eosin methylene blue auger, or EMB. And the EMB auger is um, made up with different types of sugars and dyes. And the sugars can actually be fermented to uh, produce some pretty cool colors, guys. So we are selecting for coliforms, and a coliform is a gram-negative facultative anaerobic rod. And if you have a strong fermenter, you see metallic green. If you have a low to moderate fermenter, you will see pink to purple. So here's your nice metallic green down here, guys. Strong fermenter, moderate fermenter over here. And your moderate fermenter, guys, Again, sometimes you see it pink, sometimes it's going to be purple. And we also have non-fermenters that just take on the color of the media. The urease test is another one that you could do uh, to test your bacteria. And basically, uh, the media contains phenol red, which at an alkaline pH turns a beautiful, vibrant pink, as you can see here. And the reaction that takes place is that urea will be broken down into ammonia, which has got a higher pH, uh, plus CO2. So you can also see what a couple of weak reactions look like here as well. Um, please familiarize yourself again, guys, with the KOH string test and the gram stain because you will be required to include those in an unknown lab report, which will be submitted later on. And just to remind you guys that if you have a sticky or a stringy, this is KOH positive, which means that it's gram-negative bacteria. The KOH negative over here is actually a gram-positive. So gram-positive stay watery, they don't produce that string, whereas the gram-negative gets sticky, so they actually produce this string. So moving on, uh, there's some different types of fermentation. Uh, that you will also be doing this semester. And again, guys, phenol red is a pH indicator that's in the broths and some of the other types of uh, tests that you're going to do. At an acidic pH, it turns yellow. So yellow would be an indication that you have a positive fermentation result. So when you uh, do your uh, what's called PR fermentation, experiment. With the PR fermentation, guys, it starts out this red color here. And what you'll notice inside is there's little tubes. Please know that these tubes are called durum tubes. They're called durum tubes. They detect gas production. So in this particular illustration, the left hand that you're uninoculated, you don't see any color here. However, as you go this way, you can see the that the uh, tubes are yellow. And here, guys, is a really nice example of a bubble that shows gas production in here. This is an example here of negative results, guys. 
uh, that there's no fermentation that took place. These three tubes, as you can see, all stayed red. So yellow is positive. Yellow positive. No color change, which is red, is negative. So moving on, some other types of tests that we can do are called methyl red uh, and Volk's Pross Color, also known as the MRVP test. So for your test, please know that the MR test is used to detect mixed acid fermentation. Again, it's used to detect mixed acid fermentation. And if you look then, a positive result, which is B here, will be red. Mixed acid fermentation for methyl red and positive is red. Now, when we look at the Vogue's Proskauer test, we are actually looking to see, and you can read through all of this on your own, guys, we're looking to see if pyruvate can be uh, converted into acetoin. So for VP, know that we're looking for acetoin production. And here, guys, this shows you that if acetoin is produced, it will uh, go to a diacyl compound, reacts with peptone, and turn red. You just have to know acetoin is what we're testing for. And also know that a positive uh, test, and this should actually say, I apologize, this should say positive VP. So please kind of write that in your handout. Positive VP test is also going to be a red color. Now, another quick, easy test that you can do, guys, is a catalase uh, test. Basically, all you do is you put your bacteria on a slide at hydrogen peroxide. If it bubbles like this, that is positive then for catalase being produced. And if you remember, I mentioned to you guys that catalase can actually break down some of the harmful oxygen species uh, that can be produced. Here's another really nice picture. You can really see all of those bubbles there on that. So for the oxidase test, guys, we are looking to see then if we have a uh, situation where a reduced compound is going to actually be oxidized. And our color then uh, is going to go from clear to a blue color. So you're looking for then in the oxidase test whether the bacteria contains cytochrome oxidase. Okay, so cytochrome oxidase. And here, guys, is a good example of a positive result here. On the left-hand side, guys, uh, is a negative result. So this one does not contain then the cytochrome oxidase. The citrate test is used to determine whether or not uh, citrate uh, can be utilized as a carbon source. If it is, what's going to happen, guys, first of all, the bacteria produce citrate permease, and that gets imported. Uh, uh, it can import, I should say, the citrate into uh, the cell. And what happens, guys, then, when you actually streak out a slant with your bacteria, if the citrate is imported in, you shift the color from green to a beautiful blue. So the blue is your positive uh, reaction in this. With the phenyl alanine deaminase test, guys, what we are looking to see is if the bacteria will actually produce phenyl alanine deaminase. And then basically it forms phenyl pyruvic acid. And then that's going to react with uh, ferric chloride to give you a green color. And this is an example then, guys, of the green color that you will see with the phenylalanine test. Now, some bacteria are modal and some are not. And the first tube that I'd like to show you is called a motility test tube. And the idea here, guys, is if your bacteria is modal, 
it will look cloudy in the motility tube. See how nice and cloudy that is? However, if it's non-modal, you actually stab the bacteria in, guys. You stab it in there. It doesn't go anywhere. So it just looks uh, or actually shows up just where you um, stab the specimen. And the last type of testing we're going to talk about, guys, is uh, indol. And we can use a, a really cool tube called a sim tube to detect that. So what you do is you stab your bacteria in a sim tube, guys, and you add a reagent called COVAX. Please know that COVAX reagent is used to detect then the presence of indol. So if you have a positive indol reaction, it turns red. Positive indol is going to be red. Now, some other features of the SIM tube, guys, is that you can actually look to see if sulfur is produced, okay? And as the figure mentions, these are the different bacteria that you have here with some of the results uh, that we see. So, for instance, with E. coli, uh, it doesn't produce sulfur. It's not black but it's positive for indol as indicated with this ring. You can't really tell the motility with this one. Now, if you take a look at the salmonella here, for instance, it's positive for sulfur, it's black. Indol is negative because it stayed that yellow color. And because this whole tube is filled black, it shows that it is modal. The enterobacter here is negative, no sulfur negative for the indol. However, it's pretty cloudy around here, which shows that it's modal. And that's basically it uh, for this particular uh, video. The one thing I do want to mention to you guys is please, as you're reading through uh, this handout and also the pages in your lab manual, that some of the tests, like the, the SIM tube, this phenylalanine deaminase tube, the MRVP, for instance, you do have to add various reagents to the tubes in order uh, for the detection of the chemicals that we're looking at. Again, one last thing I want to remind you of, guys, this actually should say positive VP. I apologize for that positive VP test here.